so welcome to my youtube channel so this is the very first time i am putting something on youtube today i want to discuss a very fundamental topic of vlsi which is the sram so if you understand the working principle of a sram cell it will be very easy for you to create a large memory unit so i will make a package of videos where you will design a 16-bit memory cell using sram using cadence virtuoso so please complete this whole package and you will get a fantastic idea to design something interesting using transistors also it will help you to make SRAM related projects okay so let's start so before dive into SRAM I need to share something about memory which is very essential for our computer to store our data so in electronic memory we can divide our memory into two types one is non-volatile and another one is volatile memory or you can say the volatile memory which is the primary or main memory and the non-volatile memory or the secondary memory so okay let me draw something i already draw for you okay so here is system we can see so uh, basically mm, what is the ruler okay okay so uh, when you write a program uh, you create a file on the secondary memory, secondary memory right so like a c++ file so you are uh, you have a c++ file in secondary memory or hard disk to your computer and then at some point it is loaded into the main memory okay so translated and then your program is here okay so then uh, your cpu is waiting for the instructions from the main memory right so uh, you write the bunch of instructions into your c++ codes or any program right so then uh, those instructions are actually loaded into this main memory okay so then uh, it feeds uh, the instruction to the cpu okay so then uh, your cpu is asking what's next okay so it is ready for the another instruction so it feeds the second instruction the third instruction fourth instruction so it's called actually the phase execute cycle so and these two parts the cpu and the main memory are what they are actually participate to run your program okay and the main memory is where you kind of leave okay so why actually your program lives here okay uh, now you might say oh my cpu is very fantastic so actually not the fantastic actually your programs okay so this cpu is nothing but a very fast hand calculator okay with lots of stories so you can i think you can uh, best way to think about it okay so now the reason we have the main memory is that it designed to be really fast okay so the faster main memory the faster it will communicate with the cpu and hence runs your program faster now tell me who wants to run their applications as fast as possible i hope you know the answer so the main memory is super fast and what happened is when the computer turns off the program is erased from here right your computer uh, probably uh, use both static RAM and dynamic RAM at the same time okay so here comes the static RAM and dynamic RAM okay so what are those actually so those sequential elements in the volatile memory or the main memory RAM so we can say there are lots of memory cells okay and those memory cells can be a static structure or can be the dynamic structure okay so in the static RAMs, they are faster and less troublesome, but uh, they are required more area than the dynamic counterpart. So why? So let's dive into it. Okay. So basically, the static cells use some form of feedback to maintain their state. So what kind of feedback? Okay. Here you can see there are two inverters connected back together. So we can say some cross couple inverters, which is actually connected one inputs to another outputs and thus we are creating 
stable state right so if you give some data here so it will remain stable on the dynamic part here you can see there are a transistor and a capacitor only okay so your dynamic ram is the most common type of memory in today okay so in your dynamic ram chip each memory cell holds one bit of information and is made of two parts actually so you can say that already a transistor and a capacitor in a large memory unit there are millions of these single transistor and capacitors okay so the capacitors are hold the bit of information right a zero or one and the transistor act as a switch okay that lets the control circuitry of the memory chip when write and when to read okay and also it uh, controls the circuitry on the memory chip read the capacitor or change its state okay so uh, what about capacitor so this capacitor is like a small bucket okay so there are some electrons uh, to store one the memory and when the bucket is empty that means there is uh, zero okay but the problem is uh, in the capacitor bucket is that it has leak okay so in a matter of few milliseconds a full bucket memory becomes empty okay if the leakage is very high so therefore for dynamic memory to work either the cpu or the memory controller has to come along and recharge all the capacitors holding one before the discharge right so to do this uh, the memory controllers first read the memory and it writes back before discharge okay okay so you can say there is a refresh operation obtain the state of one right so this refresh operation happens automatically thousands of times per second this refresh operation is where dynamic ram get into stem okay so now you can uh, call it the dynamic because uh, this dynamically refreshed all the time or it will forget or it forgets what it is holding right so there's the downside of uh, the dynamic ram because uh, all of this refreshing uh, it will take time and slow down the memory okay but the static rams uses a completely different technology so in this static ram those inverters hold each bit of memory but never has to be refreshed yes it uh, refreshed but uh, not for stable the state okay so this uh, makes static ram significantly faster than the dynamic ram so however uh, the static memory cells takes a lot more, more space because uh, if you know the basic fundamental VLSI, you know the inverters are make of uh, at least two transistor so here uh, there is only one transistor and on the other hand side you can say here is on four transistors so that's why uh, you get less memory per chip and that makes static ram a lot more expensive okay so so that's why static ram is fast and expensive you can say and the dynamic ram is less expensive and slower so now it's clear i hope to you so basically this static ram is used to create the cpu's speed sensitive cache memory where the dynamic rams uh, forms the larger system of ram space okay memory array is nothing but a large array containing those memory cells with some extra circuits so here we can see there's a large memory array containing the row decoder and the column circuitry in this memory array those tiny rectangular boxes are the memory cells okay and those blue lines are called the word lines and the vertical lines here that's called the bit lines so here the row decoder uses the address to activate one of the rows by asserting those word lines and the column circuitry does the vice versa using the bit lines A typical memory array may have thousand or millions of words or million of bits right so which would lead to a tall skinny layout so that is hard to fit in the chip flow plan also the memory array got slower because of the long vertical words so therefore the array is often folded into 
fewer rows of more columns. So here we can see that this 64-bit memory area is folded like here. Okay, so now the SRAM cell. A basic SRAM cell is actually consists of six transistors. That's why we also call it the 6D SRAM cell. So among those six transistors, there are four NMOSs and two PMOSs. So basically, a SRAM cell is able to read the data, write the data, and also hold the data as long as the power is applied. So that's why we call it the volatile memory. This requirement can be also accomplished by an ordinary flip-flop, but compared to the flip-flop size, it is minimal. This 6 transistor stem cell contains the pair of cross-coupled inverters. Okay, so these cross-coupled inverters is actually holding the state to its outputs. And a pair of access transistors a1 and A2 used to read or write the state. These word lines are actually used to on and off these access transistors. And the cell is written by driving the desired value and its complement onto the bit and bit bell lines. So we will talk the working principle of this SRAM cell on the next videos. So please stay tuned.